pray that our souls are viewed, renewed, revived, and refreshed. Bless us, strengthen us, guide us, and keep us. But most importantly, God, continue to love us unconditionally. We ask these things in the precious and holy name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, and thank you, Deaconess Washington, for your prayer. I am going to, uh, I'm Dr. Hamilton Stubbs, and some of you already know me, but some don't. So let me just tell you, I am a medical missionary. People want to know, why do you do these things? And uh, yes, we charge for some things, but most of our programs are given to you as part of our ministry. I'm a double board certified sleep specialist, internationally known sleep expert. And I happen to be married to the most wonderful man I've ever met. And that's Reverend Dr. Jonathan Stubbs. I don't brag about my work, but to downplay it would not be giving God the glory that he deserves. I have done some marvelous things in my life and in my career, and I give all thanks and glory to God. But we're not here to talk about me. We want to hear about Dr. Imaja Jubilee, my friend, a wonderful poet and a wonderful, uplifting, positive woman of God. Dr. Imaja Jubilee was born right here in Virginia. She's a lover of every moment of her life. She practices and embodies the belief that each day is a wonderful and amazing day to be alive. Dr. Jubilee is an inspirational speaker, soulful poet, spoken word artist, life coach, author, creative consultant, and songwriter. Talk about being blessed. She is an inclusivity and diversity consultant through NCBI, and she is a renowned inspirational speaker, workshop facilitator, and she spreads her message of love and inclusivity. Her motto is inspire, encourage, influence others to always live their lives in full expression as they continue to emerge and evolve through new becoming what they have been taught to be. She's the co-founding director of the Cultural Libations a multidisciplinary arts and humanities company. And she has co-written many pieces of work, including poetry. We are so blessed and I'm so honored that she joined us today to give us some instructions on guided meditation, the theater of our mind. So I am going to turn this over to my friend, Dr. Jubilee. Good morning, beloveds. Can I hear y'all say good morning, please? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. You know, I was raised by a minister and a first lady, and we did a call and response. If y'all could hear something, I need to hear y'all say, okay, I got it. I got it. You know, are, are you picking up what I'm putting down? You're going to let me know in some way that you're picking up what I'm putting down. This is the way that I was raised, okay? <laughs> so I incorporate the way that I was raised. My daddy was a pastor. He's 98 years old and he's still living, okay? And part of what I do and why I do it is because of the way that I was raised. I was raised to wake up in the morning and say, thank you, God, it's to see another day. Because as my mother would say, it could have been the other way, but it wasn't. So we are here today and I am honored to, that I want to thank Dr. Pamela for inviting me to do this. And what I'm going to give you a few instructions. I want you to have a pencil and a paper handy, all right? And when, when I give you the cues, if something comes up for you, feel free to write it down because you're going to use this. As you go forward in this Health and Wellness Summit, and when I previewed everything that Dr. Pamela had with the vision board, you're going to get something out of this that you're going to be able to use in that, all right? Can I get an amen? Amen. Oh, right. 
All Go right. Ahead. So it's time, and I want to do a little test here for a minute to see if you all can hear this and hear me. Can you hear the background music? No, not really. Okay, no. well, then we just won't use it. I do not have a whole lot of tech savvy, so we're going to do this and allow the spirit to work through us, all right? Amen. So and we're going to allow our minds, we're going to go on a voyage in our minds, a journey in our minds. Now, I want you to be, breathe, and let it be. 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 We breathe the breath of God. Love above and love below. Love above and love below. Love below, love above, and love below. We breathe the breath of God. God breathed into us, and we became living souls. The Amen. breath is our connection. So I want you to find a comfortable position wherever you're sitting. Take shoes off. We got to take shoes off. Okay. And I want you to wiggle your toes. And then I want you to go to your mind. Go in the theater of your mind. And close your eyes because where you sit is holy. You're in a holy place in your body and in your mind. So you're going to be still as scripture tells us and know. Be still and know. So relax, let go of any worries or distraction and bring your attention to your breath and to the present moment. And with an attitude of enthusiasm in your heart, you have a great adoration. A heart that's filled with Christ. You have a Christed heart that radiates out the light that is from within you. Your heart is filled with gratitude and thankfulness. And so inside the theater of your mind, you passionately praise the Almighty that woke you up this morning. You passionately remember who sits high and low and who flows through you. So inhale and exhale. Inhale softly and exhale, remembering you breathe the breath of God. You feel relaxed in your whole body. But as we go through this, you're going to remember in the theater of your mind that you're sitting in a holy space. Sitting in this holy space, you will be still and know. Breathe. And as you be still and know, you connect to your Christed heart, the light that resides within. And remember that your desires are ordered from your heart by God. No one else. They're ordered by God. Remembering the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And as you sit in the stillness, you might have a little chatter in your mind. But let it dissipate. Imagine God is sending a soft breeze. And it's sending it through the theater of your mind and to bring you more stillness and the thoughts go away. And you're remembering that God is your source of peace, your joy, and stillness, beloved, is your true nature. As you rest in the theater of your mind and in the stillness, I want you to see before you in the theater of your mind a path. You're in your chair, but you're going to see a path before you in your mind and you look at this path and you see all these tall stalks green stalks but at the top there are sunflowers beautiful blossoming sunflowers they're tall and they're brilliant and they're growing out from the ground is green below and as companion 
what you do is you stand up in the theater of your mind. You're going to walk down this path. You smell the fragrance of the sunflowers. And the sunflower on the ground has to have companions for it to grow. There are cucumbers and watermelons and pumpkins. And you smell the fragrance of tomatoes as you see them on the vine. They're so strong. The wind is blowing the fragrance through your nose that you can almost taste that watermelon in your mouth. You can almost taste the sweetness of that tomato. You can almost taste everything that's going down that path, but you continue to walk. You continue to walk. You're barefooted, remember, and you're grounded to God's beautiful earth. And as you continue to walk, there's a hand that comes and says, come my child and follow me. There's no figure with it, there's just a hand, but we know that it's the hand of the Lord that is leading you down the pastors. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. And the voice says, follow me and I will guide you. I will guide you barefooted, you receive it and you got guidance in your heart. Your mind is clear and you keep walking. And I want you to repeat in the stillness of your mind, in the theater of your mind, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And we're going to change it up and say, love is my shepherd because God is love. So love is your shepherd. Remind yourself as you walk on that you are loved unconditionally and that you are worthy of the love. And as you continue to walk and you walk on down and you see a heart-shaped rock because you hear the girdling sounds of water and there's a heart-shaped rock and you got it. And the voice says, sit on the rock is a symbol of my love. You sit there in the rock, on the rock, I meant, and you're going to be still and know. You are guided. Every moment you are guided. And as you sit there on this rock and you breathe in, you know for yourself, you know that you know that you know that all is well. Every bone, every joint in your body resonates with the love of God. Every heart cell, every organ vibrates with the vibrancy of the life that God has given you. You breathe and you're still. The Lord is my shepherd. And as you continue to breathe, I want you to take your pen and your paper. You're sitting on the rock, the water before you. I want you to write down three things that you accomplished in 2023. Write down three things that you just, mm, 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 you could shout about it, that God did for you in 2023. Three things. And as they are revealed to you, you give praise and you give thanks for those wonderful things that you did in 2023. Those three things that stand out in your mind. And you could have done them for your family, done them for your church, for your community, for your organization that you work with, it don't matter. And you are proud because you know that you brought joy through your talents and gift that you gave to the world. You gave them. And as you continue, now you've written down three things. Let's take a moment. Be, breathe, and let it be. So you put your pen down and you come back to the theater of your mind. I want you to think about other moments that brought you joy. The moments that brought you joy in 2023. The challenges that you face, the optics, opticals that you face. And you want to think about the faith and the trust that God gave you. You put in God and you made it through. But you want to just acknowledge that God brought you through 2023. Feel it, know it, be it, feel it. And as you continue to feel the warmth of the spirit, you hear a voice say, 
Job well done, my good and faithful one. Breathe, be, and allow it to be. Now, I want you to do in the theater of your mind and from the intuitive sense of your Christ at heart, what are some of the things, patterns of behavior that you are asking God to bring you through so that you can put it in 2024 to look at what are they physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Write down anything that comes to your mind, that comes to your mind. You gracefully accept them, put them down. The things that you need to visit and remembering the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Write down anything that comes and just bless it. Bless those things. Because we know that with the power of a Christ at heart, we can accomplish all things. Breathe, be, and let it be. Now place your left hand on your heart. And you feel the rise and fall of your breath as it goes in and out your body. And now we move ahead. We sit and we ask to be shown again those things, goals, values, everything that we need to accomplish in 2024 in order to have flourishing relationships and most of all to honor God. Again, revisit that and write it down. And as you think, think of what your heart's desire. What is it that you most desire to have manifest, to bring forth through the help of faith and trust in God again in 2024, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? Your left hand on your heart, allow it to come from your heart, beloved. You know, our mind, the enemy gets in it, it can play tricks on us. Be aware of what comes through your Christ at heart. And as you think of your heart's desires, Ask yourself, are they aligned with God? Breathe, be, and let it be. Are they aligned with love? Breathe, be, and allow it to be. Are they aligned with the Holy Spirit? Breathe, be, and let it be. Are they reflecting of what God desires for you? Breathe, be, and let it be. Sit in the stillness for a minute and breathe. And that hand that it was on the path with you comes and puts its hand over your left hand. And it affirms for you in the theater of your mind that you are in alignment with what God desires for you. So with it, you're filled with excitement and enthusiasm and zest and zeal because you have aligned yourself with your Christ at heart, your desires, and they will manifest when you put your faith and trust in God. And so what you do with those desires, the hand that led you is removed. You remove your left hand and the right hand that came across to hold you, that nestled you in the tapestry of love that is above and below. You breathe, be, and let it be. And you feel a sense of deep connect connectiveness sitting on a heart-shaped rock by the water. You feel strong. You feel deep connection. You're connected with your inner self. You're connected with your inner Christ itself. You're connected with your creator. Be still and know and say in the theater of your mind, I'm ready. I am ready. I am grounded. I am centered. I am focused for the new blessings that are about to come to me in 2024. You are ready to live your best life. And you are ready to express your Christ itself in your family, your community, wherever you are in the world. And when you Know this and feel it. 
again, feel that tapestry. You're sitting on this heart-shaped rock. Put both hands on your chest, right over left or left over right, and give yourself a hug in the theater of your mind. In the theater of your mind, bless yourself, bless your family, bless your community, bless where you are at this time in your life, knowing because you're growing and you're glowing and you're just wrapped in a tapestry, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Sit for a moment, bask in that love, bask in that joy, bask. Pretend that there's a shower coming from above with the clouds all over you and cup your face, hold your face. This is the face that you take forward in the world. Take your right hand and put it on your head and say, I bless the thoughts that run through my head, thought by thought. Put them on your ears. I bless the ears that I hear with because I hear with the ear behind the ear, which is God. Put your hands on your mouth and bless the words that flow from your mouth because the words that flow from our mouth are words that are given by the Almighty. Come back down to your heart and you take a moment and you thank God. You kind of reel and rock a little bit. You know how you rock a baby? You're going to rock yourself. You're going to soothe your soul because you are about to unfold what God has given you for 2024. And in 2024, you're going to soar with the sweetness of spirit overflowing and outpouring love, understanding with your God itself, and you are going to be awake and alive and aware, and you're going to go forth into the reality of the world. Now come back, pick your hands down, put them upon your lap, you're on the rock, and you hear a voice say, it's time to leave my child. So you get up, you bow your head and give thanks in your heart for all that you have received during this guided imagery. You thank your mind for you have walked this journey in the theater of your mind. You get up off the rock thanking the grass you walked on, the water beside and the rock, thanking spirit. And you take a moment to thank everything that is around. You walk back through that garden of sunflowers and vegetables, and you thank it for having gently allowed its energy to flow and meet you. And then when you get to the end of the path, you look back and you wave, you wave at everything that just has transpired because you know it called came through you. You know that you are love. You're grounded in love, made by love, for love. And you know that you have God's support. And for his, with his grace and mercy, as you come back and you, you are sitting in your chair, I want you to open your eyes and look at everybody that's on the Zoom. Look around and bless them with your eyes. Wave at them. Show them some love. Show them some love, beloved. And most of all, send that love from your heart, your Christ at heart. And throughout your day today, I want you to remember that you can return to this place any time that you choose to. You can return to a space and communicate however it comes for you. And what I want you to also remember, that love is my shepherd. I shall not want. Even though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemy. You are not my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Remember, beloved, God is your source. Not man. God, it said, 
God is my source. Turn your mic on. Let me hear you. God, God is, is, my God is my source. God is my source. God is my source. God is God my source. God is my source. So knowing that in your heart, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong. And what I would like to leave with you as I wrap up, I bless you with love and kindness. I am a part of your holy family now, as you are mine. And I want to thank you all for allowing me to take you through this guided imagery in the theater of your mind. God bless you. And thank you so very much, Dr. Pamela, for allowing me to lead this meditation. And I would like to leave you with this. Remember to live your life in full expression, guided by the Almighty. And life, L-I-F-E, is live in full expression. Now breathe, be, and allow it to be. And so it is, and so it shall be. Amen, amen. Ashe, ashe. Um, thank you very much, dear. Good morning, everybody. I'm 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 very blessed to to be here with you, and I thank God for allowing me to live to see one more day. We've talked about 2023 and 2024, and uh, 2023 helped to show me that life is very fragile. And as it said, life is fragile. Handle it with prayer. In November of 2023, in a two-week span, three of our cousins died. They were all in their, they were all around my age, actually, and two of them were younger than I am. So I know that, that God is with us, and I also know that we have no time to waste. We have to be about God's business while we can. So... This morning, I want to do three things. The first thing is I want to share with you a word of scripture from the Gospel of Matthew. That'll help give some of the context for what I'm going to share, which, which is the second thing, which is my personal testimony regarding uh, the challenge that God allowed me to experience dealing with the diagnosis of prostate cancer. 18 years ago, it was in January of 2006 when I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. The third thing I want to do is connect the scripture and my testimony to 2024. And I hope that when this, uh, my comments are over that you will also feel encouraged, that you will feel empowered, that you will feel that moving into 2024 that you will be able to accomplish everything that God sets before you to accomplish through the power of God's spirit, that with God, all things are possible, that with God, nothing is impossible, and that God is walking with us. As Dr. Jubilee said, God is our shepherd. God is love, and God walks with us through the power of his love in this dark world, shepherding us through and leading us forward. So I want at the end of this for you to feel, yes, I can through the power of God, I will and I am moving forward through the spirit and power of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'll start with sharing um, the screen. And this is the, the scripture. It's from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14. Um, can, can you see it? Somebody give me a thumbs up. I see Ed's nodding. Yes. All right. This passage of scripture comes after Jesus had fed 5,000 men plus women and children 
with five loaves of bread and two fish. The, the gospel writer says this, verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It's I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed up into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly you are the son of God. And when they crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. This gives you a scriptural background for my journey. I, I wrote a book 10 years ago now, going on 11 years, and I need to update it. And the book was called Out of the Boat, Trusting God in the Midst of Life's Storms. It was a way of me trying to put down some of my thoughts about my faith journey, the walk with God after I was diagnosed with early stage prostate cancer. To add a little more background to it, and I have my good friend and, and childhood neighbor on the phone, brother Eric Johnson. We, we grew up together in Gloucester, Virginia. And so our relationship goes back over 65 years now. And <clears throat> And my father, the late Deacon Calvin Stubbs, was diagnosed with late stage prostate cancer in 1990. The disease had already spread throughout his body when it was diagnosed. And so it was a very, very challenging time for my mother, my brother, my dad, and me. And we walked through that journey until my father passed away in January, 1993. It's been 31 years ago now. But at that time when my father passed, I made up my mind, I don't want that to be my story. I, I want to try to take some precautions uh, to make sure that anything that's going on in my body, I can catch it at an earlier stage. And so I started going to my doctor faithfully for my annual physicals and getting my prostate specific antigen PSA tested. Well, over the years from 1993, all the way up until 2003, each year it seemed that the PSA reading would go up a little bit. It started out at less than one. And then it was 1.1. 1 .1. 
2.2. So in 2003, over that 10 year period, it had been less than one when we started out, but by 2003, it was up above two, it was 2.2. .2. In 2004, it was kind of funny because I felt sort of un, like something was off. Sometimes if perhaps you've had that experience too, you you know that there's something just not right with you. You feel in your body, there's something a little bit off here. I don't know what it is, but it's just not right. And I felt that in 2004. And now I'm gonna suggest that you don't do what I did. In 2004, I kind of put, up, put it off. I put off getting my annual exam as long as I could. I waited and I got it. And then after I got it, I didn't get the results in the mail. Usually my doctor's office would send the results through the mail and I would look and see what happened. But nothing came in the mail. I must suggest again, don't do what I did. I didn't follow up. I didn't call the doctor's office and say, hey, you know, I was waiting for my lab results and nothing came. I didn't do that. I assumed no news is good news because I wanted it to be good news. So I just assumed that it was. Don't do that. Stay on top of things. Well, I just made my assumption in the next year, I put off my exam again, but I got it in October of 2005. And my doctor did something that was unlike him. He picked up the phone and he called me at home. And he's very busy, he got a big practice. And Dr. Hathcock said, your PSA in 2003 was 2.2, .2, and now it's up to 3.5. That's a flag, but not necessarily a big one. I suggest you have a biopsy, he told me. So I said, well, okay. I wasn't real happy to hear that, but well, okay. It's October, it's the end of the year. And I really don't wanna do this, but I know I've gotta do it. So I procrastinated a little bit more. My wife and I had been invited to go to an international conference out of the country in South Africa. And so that was a good excuse to put it off until January that I would get the biopsy. At least it was a good excuse in my mind. And my, my, my urologist, was a little busy, so we'll wait till January. January comes, 2006, I have the biopsy. While, when I had the biopsy, there was something funny about the whole experience. It was like, I had a sense that they are likely to find cancer. I don't know why, but I, I just had that feeling. And fortunately for me, there was a revival meeting going on in town uh, a televangelist, Dr. W.V. Grant Jr., who's out of Dallas, Texas, um, came through Richmond, and I went to the um, programs, and I felt encouraged and inspired. And in one of the programs, I felt like it's going to be okay, and and I also saw my doctor, because he was attending the programs too when it came over to the Richmond Christian Center. And just looking at him, he didn't really look at me and I felt like, oh, that's not a good sign, you know, that he's not making eye contact. It's, it's something, something's going on. I don't know what it is, but just in my spirit, I felt like, oh, and so I waited, went to my urologist in February of 2006. My wife and I got there and we were the last ones that he talked with that day. We got there early, but he saw about 10 or 15 people before he called us into the room. And the first thing out of his mouth was, Mr. Stubbs, you do have cancer. 
It was just that simple. And then he began to go through what the possibilities were. I could have surgery, I could have radiation. It was in the early stages. Um, and then he pulled out this little grid and on the grid, um, it suggested that a person in my situation probably could expect to live another 10 years. That's what his little grid said. So he said, all right, I'm 53 years old, 10 years, that means I'd live to be about 63. Well, I decided with my wife's help, we began to do more research. We went to a, a urologist who was the head of the department at UVA and who said, um, after he had examined me and taken my family history, he said, well, you need to have surgery or radiation. And if you don't, in six or seven years, you could be in some serious troubles. So for me, that was kind of like in six or seven years, serious trouble. That sounds like the old na 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 hey 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 goodbye and that and that was that was not what I wanted to hear okay uh, some of y'all feeling me I see you from your expression you understand that was not welcome news so um. I began to pray because I, I recognized that even if I did what the doctors said, and I asked one of the doctors, I said, well, if I do what you say, how am I gonna know that all of the cancer is gone? And they said, well, medicine's not an exact science. So in other words, you don't, you won't know. You know, we're gonna try it and maybe it'll work, but maybe it won't work. And then I thought about it, well, if it, they tried it and it works, that's good. But cancer is microscopic. You got these little cells and you cannot see every cancer cell in your body using the technology that they had. They had the CTs and the various uh, ultrasounds, but you couldn't see every cell. And the cells, they floating around, maybe some are in my prostate, but maybe some have escaped and gotten outside. So. Suppose I do this, I'm thinking, and they have the, I have the surgery, I have the radiation, but there's some cancer left. So what's that going to mean? Well, it means that my lifestyle, my quality of life is going to go down. I've done research and I found out that after these type of procedures, sometimes people lose their sexual function, sometimes they're incontinent, sometimes the all sorts of things that happen. I thought, well, now wait a minute. If I go through all of this and I still have cancer and my quality of life has gone down, how happy am I gonna be with that outcome? And the answer was, I'm not gonna be too happy about that. So I said, all right, I don't know what to do, but I know one thing, God knows what to do. And I know this. God knows more than anyone, knows more than I do, knows more than all the doctors in the world put together. God knows more than all the human beings put together. God knows. And I had the experience of knowing that God can do anything. I had seen God in work, at work. I'd seen God in my own life. I grew up in, in Gloucester County, Virginia. Uh, in the segregated South in the 1950s and 60s. Yes, I've yes, gone through this desegregation process in the South. I had seen people live and die. I had been in a church in Cambridge, Massachusetts, St. Paul's AME Church, uh, where I was on the ministerial staff while in Divinity School, where I met Pastor Scott. And, and I had seen God through the power of the Holy Spirit deliver people who were demon oppressed. I had seen people who were sick being healed in the church. I had seen and I had heard testimonies. And so I knew that God can do it. What I also know is that God doesn't have to do it. 
We can ask and God can say yes. God can say wait. And God can say no. And I know this because in my father's case, I had prayed, I had fasted, I had done everything I knew how to do to try to persuade God to let my father overcome cancer and come back, like he said, with a strong testimony. But that was not what God's will was. My father passed away. And I had to accept that. And I had to accept the fact that God could say no to me. I wanted God to heal me without surgery or radiation. That was my prayer. But I recognized God could say no. I recognized God could say, do the surgery. And if God said that, and I was clear in my heart and my mind, that's what God wants me to do, fine. Because God, again, knows better than Jonathan. So I was okay with that. Or if God says, do do the radiation of different types. You could do seeds, you could do external beam, fine, whatever. If, But I also know I can ask for what I want. And God, you know, I, I just pray and ask God to show me. And that's where Dr. Jubilee's prayer and meditation comes in, to, to be still and to listen for the for the word of God, the will of God, and and Pastor Scott yesterday helped us along these lines too. We have to stop going backwards and move forward. And so that means to stop is to organize, to take time to organize ourselves and to consider the possibilities that yes, God can do this, but I've got to take the time to listen to God. And I had prayed and I asked God, I said, God, I wanna have a closer walk with you. That's doing that. That was my New Year's resolution at the end of 2005. I want a closer walk with you, God. And in the beginning of 2006, I go into the doctor's office and he says, Mr. Stubbs, you do have prostate cancer. You do have cancer. And of course, at that moment, you talk about a closer walk. I was running to grab a hold of God in the spirit as close as I and hold on as close as I could because. I know now this is life-threatening and that only, only God is going to be able to bring me through if I'm to come through this. One Saturday morning, about this time on a Saturday in February of 2006, I felt in my spirit, get your, get your legal pad. My wife mentioned I'm a, a, I'm a law teacher. So I had these yellow, long yellow pads, eight and a half by 14, long ones. And I get that. So I had one next to my bed. I, I reached over and I grabbed it, pulled out my pen, and I began to, to write. I felt the Lord saying, first thing, exercise. Exercise what? Exercise your body. Because I was being, I was into a sedentary lifestyle. I was getting kind of soft and lazy. So exercise. And I was back during the time when that I was still jogging and doing that type of thing. Exercise, go to the gym, exercise. But also it came to me, you have got to exercise your faith. Faith is a kind of spiritual muscle and you've got to exercise your faith on a daily basis. To spend some time with the Lord in prayer, in meditation, and exercise your faith. You've got to be willing to act on your faith. Exercise. And you'll recall in the scripture that I had read to you about Peter and Jesus and the disciples on the lake early in the morning before the sun rose, Jesus sees them struggling they are rowing. They are trying to cross the lake and they are being pushed back by the wind and by the waves. The, the boat is rocking. And sometimes when we have these adversities in our lives, stuff comes up 
It's like being on a stormy lake and it's dark and the boat is rocking and the wind is blowing and you're saying, how am I going to make it? And Jesus saw them. He saw that they were struggling and he starts coming to them. And so I want you to remember in 2024, the Lord sees you. If you are struggling, if you are feeling like you're being buffeted to and fro, don't worry. Even though it may look dark, God is with you, coming to your rescue. And that's what Jesus did. He walked on the water in the teeth of the wind. He is coming to the boat. The wind is blowing him too. The waves are rocking too, but he's still walking. And he arrives at the boat, near the boat. And the disciples see him and they're screaming and crying. Ah! It's a ghost, it's a ghost, it's a ghost. And they're terrified and they're panicking, they're freaking out. And Jesus says, take courage, don't be afraid. It's I. I'm here. You don't have to worry about it. And that's another message for you, that the Lord is with us. You don't have to panic. You don't have to fear. The Lord is right here. And now I want to talk about Peter because I see Jonathan Stubbs and Peter. Jesus says, well, Peter says, uh, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. You see, if it's you. You know, Jesus has already said it's him. He says, Jesus says, take courage. And he said this immediately. He didn't hesitate. It's I. Don't be afraid. That should have ended it right there. Take courage. It's Jesus. Don't be afraid. But that was not the end of the conversation. That was the beginning of the conversation for Peter. And maybe Peter is, maybe some other folks can identify with Peter. Peter says, <clears throat> Lord, if, big word, if, if it's you, showing that Peter is not convinced that it is Jesus. Not beyond, not 100% convinced. He's, well, it could be him, sounds like him, but maybe it's not him. Maybe we're imagining him. Maybe it is a ghost. Maybe it's a demon. We don't know what it is, but Lord, if it's you, Peter, Peter now putting it to the test, putting the Lord to the test, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And so Jesus says, come. Kind of calls Peter's bluff. You don't think it's me? It is me. Come. Come on. Come on, Peter. And now Peter did something remarkable. Peter was in the boat. The boat had been rocking and reeling and the wind blowing and it's still blowing. But Peter, bless his heart, summoned up enough faith to get down out of the boat, says Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water. I'm going to pause right there. Peter walked on the water. He was doing what Jesus was doing. He was exercising faith. He was walking on the water, and he came towards Jesus. And some of us been there. The Lord has blessed us, has done something in our lives, and we say, I'm, I'm going to serve you, Lord. I'm going to I'm going to do better. And we start walking in faith. The wind's still blowing against us. The water, there are things going on in our lives. It may be finance. It may be health. It may be relationship. It may be whatever it is. But we are out of the boat. We're stepping out and moving towards the Lord, moving towards doing what the Lord would have us to do. But, verse 30, but when he saw the wind, great God from Zion, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. And, and we look at our circumstances and fear takes over. And when we look at the circumstances, when our fear outweighs our faith, 
That's the time we began to sink. And yet Peter had the sense to know what to do. He cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately, the Bible says, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And in my walk, that's been my challenge. Faith. Little faith. Having enough faith to keep on believing that the Lord is with me, is with us, will see me through. Of little faith. And so the, here I am with my little yet with my yellow pad. I'm writing. I'm writing exercise. The next thing the Lord tells me to write, He says, <clears throat> "Diet." And what's on the diet? Dark. Eat dark green leafy vegetables. And I get the sense, dark green leafy vegetables. Well, that's kale, that's spinach, that's greens. And then I feel, what else? Well, have some broccoli and cauliflower. Have, have that. And, and what else? Well, some whole grains, like what? Like oats and rice and have some fruits and oranges and apples and dates. Have that grapefruit, drink lots of water, eat nuts. It's all right to have some broil fish from time to time. And you know, I'm 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 a country boy. Like I was raised on soul food. There's no fried chicken on here. You know, there's there's no 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 pork chops. There's no there's no meat, you know, but this is basically a plant-based diet. It's okay. It's a simple diet. Drink drink tea, green tea. All right. So I write these things down. But the Lord's not through. Next thing he says is, get the junk out of your life. Get the junk. <laughs> junk. Well, junk. All right. I, I was raised by two parents who grew up during the Depression. And during the Depression, people used, repurposed, saved everything. Nothing was thrown away that could possibly be put to good use. Why? Because funds are tight. And you got to use whatever you can to stretch the dollar. So we saved a lot of stuff that many people would have thrown out. And I was in the habit of saving things. I've got, I still am in, the, in that habit. I haven't overcome this yet, but I'm working on it. Get the junk out of your life. And not only clutter, physical clutter, but it's also the spiritual junk. Like what? Well, Unnecessary drama, negative drama and conflicts, getting into discussions and arguments and battles and back and forth and wasting your breath, your time, your energy, being uptight, going to bed at night, mad at something or somebody. Get the junk out of your life. Get it out. It's killing you if you dwell in that stuff. Get it out. So that was something that the Lord said. Get the junk out. What else? Sincere prayer and meditation. You gotta, you gotta pray. You gotta listen to God. You got to be there. You got to spend time with the Lord. Do that. And then what else? Well, you gotta rest. Get your rest. Let your body heal. And share the testimony. Don't keep it to yourself. Share the testimony with other people. So I had my marching orders. My wife came back in February that same day, a little bit in the afternoon. She began to repurpose her medical practice. She, she restructured it in order to focus on nutrition and health so she could help me out. 
my wife, bless her heart, early one morning, must have been 5.30, quarter to six. She's outside with a shovel digging in the backyard. And I wake up and I, I miss her out of the bed. I, I get up and I'm looking for her. Where is she? She's outside with a shovel digging in the backyard. What are you doing? The Lord told me to plant a garden. So she was out there digging before six o'clock to plant a garden, an organic garden, so that we would have food, so that my body would be healed. And so I didn't appreciate it at the time. I thought that was going a bit too far. But when God tells you to do something, you got to do it. It doesn't matter if, you're, if your husband doesn't see the light at the moment. You got to do, or your wife for that matter, you got to do what God tells you to do. And so that spiritual support is important to have folks around you who are going to help lift you up and encourage you even when you, in the midst of the storm, the wind is blowing and the boat is rocking and all of that, to be in a good place where there's somebody who is there with you, for you, to help you out. And so we began on this journey together. I, I shared with her when she came back that afternoon, I said, you know, the Lord was speaking to me this morning and he was telling me some things I need to do. And I just went down through the list of things that I had written down with the diet and the exercise and all of that. And as as I was doing that, um, then she said, you know, I went to the medical library and they brought me some information. I had asked them to do some research. And the research that my wife had, she had brought, I don't know, about 10 medical articles and they were talking about diet. And in those articles, they were taught, saying the same sorts of things. People on these high plant-based diets, low fat, not without all the dairy and the sugar and the grease and all of that, they did better. And if they, if they had prostate cancer, it was called indolent. It was not aggressive. It didn't spread. And people died of something else. And so that to me was an affirmation of what the Lord was saying. Now, in addition to in addition to that, we then began to change our diet. And my PSA, my numbers began to go back down towards the normal range. And I had another series of tests. And I'm not gonna go into all of those tests it's because now it's 18 years. And you can see I'm still here. I didn't have the surgery. I didn't have the radiation. I do take some medications that and that are anti-cancer medication. They are medications that are systemic. That is, they affect all parts of my body. And it has not significantly decreased the quality of my life. I did have to change my diet. I eat a lot of plant-based meals now. I eat a lot of raw foods, not all raw. Some things are still cooked. And I also believe in living life as it comes to me, that each moment, each second is a gift. And so if I wanna have a little treat, I'll have a little treat, whatever that might be. A little taste of this, a little taste of that. I, I want something sweet, try not to overdo it, but I will, have something. When the holidays come, I'll have something. When the weekend comes, I've been on my diet strictly all week, but on Saturday or Sunday, I may liberalize it a little bit. And so that's sort of been the part of my journey. What I want you to remember is that the Lord is with us in the storm, in the midst of the storm. If you just have a little faith, the faith of a mustard seed. 
God will do the rest. If you have the enough faith of a Peter to get out of the boat, to get out of your comfort zone, to listen to God and to believe that God is speaking to you, and then you can test it out. Okay, Lord, if it's you, I'm going to come to you. I'm coming the way that I think you want me to come. That requires you to get out of the boat, to have the faith to try. And then as you try, God will affirm as you go down the path that you're on the right path, or maybe you're not. The Lord has got ways to get each of our attention. God knows each of us by name. Jesus says he knows the number of hairs on our head. So he knows us intimately because he formed us, he made us, and he can get your attention. He may speak to you in ways different than he speaks to me, but he will get your attention. That you can be sure of. And as you walk in faith, then God will send people into your life, situations into your life. I've had some excellent doctors, some who helped me out along the way, the late Charles Snuffy Myers was up in up near Charlottesville, um, Virginia. He helped me for from 2006 until he ended his practice in 2017. Excellent doctor, Dr. Mark Schultz is helping me now. And of course, my dear bride had come up with a prostate cancer dietary protocol that has helped me. So there are lots of people, folks who prayed for me. Pastor Scott, I called him early in that battle and he prayed with me. And there are others uh, who prayed with me and for me. So this is a, faith is a common walk. It's a community walk. It's a family walk. And God holds us together as an extended human family. So as we move forward in 2024, somebody said, okay, Rev, Time to close. So we, we, we're closing now. As we move forward in 2024, just remember that, and going back to Dr. Jubilee, God will pull us up out of the miry clay and set us on a rock. And that rock is our relationship with him through Christ. Through Christ, because Jesus taught us what? Love God with everything, all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if we love God, then we will be wanting to do what God wants us to do. When we say, Lord, not my will, thy will be done, we will mean it and we'll be ready to move on it, to try to get out of the boat like Peter did. Love God. And love is an action word. We cannot see God, but we can see God's people, our extended family. So Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. He goes back to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 12. Love your neighbor as yourself. And how do we know that? We know that by something Jesus said in Matthew's gospel, chapter 7, verse 12, in all things do unto others as you would have them do unto you, because on this hangs all of the law and the prophets. In other words, when you want to boil down the scripture to one thing, Jesus says it all hangs on this act of love. What in all things do unto others as you would have them do unto you in everything, whatever we're doing. In other words, show some signs we're like Jesus. We're trying to follow Jesus' command, love one another, treat everybody with respect. And God will show us how to love. Not just a sentimental love, but, but how God will guide us. And if we do that in 2024, then we will also be a part of something else that God has laid on my heart, and I believe on the hearts of many people, people of faith all around the world, we see that our world is in great trouble. The world is like the boat on the stormy sea. 
it's dark and our societies in the United States is rocking and reeling and the wind is against us. The progress that has been made for so many people who've been excluded and shut out and locked out, that progress is being rolled back. But guess what? The Lord is still with us. And guess what? We are overcomers. And as we're looking forward to Dr. King's holiday, which is a holiday for everybody, we can bear in mind that we are overcomers. 18 years after the diagnosis, I'm still standing. Why? Because God is with me, in front of me. God is there. Beside me, God is there. Above me, God is there. Beneath me, God is there. Behind me, God is there. But most of all, I say, come, Lord Jesus, as he has said to me, come and be with me, dwell in me, live in me. And I invite you to do the same through 2024. Ask the Lord to take up residence in your hearts, in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, in our walk, in our talk. And guess what? When it's all said and done, we can take courage regardless of whatever's happening. We don't have to be afraid. Why? Because with God, nothing is impossible. And with God, all things are possible. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story. You know, a lot of times when we have things happening to us, we want to keep it to ourselves. I can understand that it's personal and you don't want everybody to know your business. But if you find the courage to share with some praying people, not the gossip people, not the people that are just going to talk, but pray with the people who love you, share with the people you, who love you, I believe you have better outcomes. And that's supported by the research. We do better when we pray together. So I'm so happy that my husband shared the testimony today. He continues to, to do as the Lord told him to share the story. It's an amazing story because when he went, started to go back in 2010, the doctor looked at us and said, I've seen prostate cancer progress, but I've never seen it regress. And I thought, you know, I have to be very careful about talking to my colleagues or I could end up on the quack list. You know, that's the list where they put all those doctors that aren't practicing conventional medicine. But my husband's story, has changed the entire way that I practice medicine. Instead of focusing just on sleep, sleep has become an addition to focus on your nutrition, your movement, and your faith. Four things that are pillars to our health. And I thank him for that. And I thank you for coming out, sharing. Without him, I was predicted to be blind. But I talked to a, a colleague of mine, he said, Eat that diet that you're, you're giving your husband. And guess what? My doctor told me the last time I saw him, I can't understand why you see, because looking at the back of your eyes, you ought to be blind. But I'm not blind. I still wear glasses. My vision can now be corrected to 2012, which is better than it was when I was 12. And I give all praise and glory to God. There's a message here. It does matter what we eat and how we pray, how we sleep and how we move. And we have to hang on to our faith. There's a lot of naysayers out here and they will attack you. I'm not telling you don't get conventional medicine. What I'm telling you is that sleep, diet, prayer, movement, they have a role to play in our health. And my husband is a living testimony and so am I. So I'm going to open up your mics if you like. 
And um, I know some people will have to go, so I want to see if Doc, if Coach uh, Aranda is still here. Um, Coach Aranda is a holistic health practitioner who's going to be joining us next week. And if she's available, I have her un unmute herself and just say hello to you. Um, she's going to be speaking on Tuesday, January 16th, under Level Up Nutrition. I got that from a prayer line, Level Up. I had to look that up to see what does it mean. Sometimes we are here, and level up means move yourself up here. We all move at different paces. So, you know, you may not become vegan overnight. It depends on how strongly you're motivated. You may not even have to be a vegan for the rest of your life, but you may, may need to be vegan momentarily. You may need to do something momentarily. And um, I just wanted you to have an opportunity to meet someone who's an expert, who's going to give us some guidance. Sure, you can Google everything, but why, why just Google it by yourself? Google and then come and ask Coach Rhonda, somebody who's actually doing this. So I'm going to give it to you, Coach uh, Rhonda. And thank you for coming and sitting in Absolutely. with us. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you so much for the opportunity. It's such a blessing. Um, my name is Aranda Young, and I am a certified integrative nutrition coach. Most people say, well, what does that mean? <laughs> so that gives me the opportunity to educate in different modalities as far as with um, the different healths, yeah, um, as far as more on um, culture, because a lot of different cultures have different as far as how they actually eat and how their lifestyles are and we can learn a lot from different cultures on how they actually stay and fit. And I, I don't know if y'all familiar with the blue zones as far as the five, um, the Mediterranean diets and, and how they're actually living over a hundred. <laughs> the I think it's centur cent um, centurions. I think that's how you pronounce it. They're living over a hundred with all their teeth. <laughs> they're, you know, just exercising and I mean, hiking and, and doing all a lot of things that even when you're in your twenties and thirties, it's like, Ooh, that's a challenge. But, um, so that's just some of the things that I actually teach. I also, uh, teach on how to de detoxify your, your body as well. That is so important because a lot of things would develops in our cells can be eradicated by just doing detoxification as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, we're going to be talking about the cicada rhythm and how our diet, as far as our eating habits and just our daily practices, how it can affect our sleeping patterns as well. So just to give you a little taste on that. And uh, so Dr. Scrubs, did you have anything that you wanted to add or you want me to add? <laughs> so. Well, we could, you know, sleep is my area of expertise yes. <laughs> and my joy. So you and I could talk for hours, but I think the rest <laughs> of these people <laughs> probably have something else they want to do it probably you too <laughs> yes but yes. i could tell you that your diet will make a big difference in how well you sleep mm -hmm. i discovered that years ago because i'm a medical missionary i'm working with people who are uninsured and no insurance and that's usually people of modest means and very limited income we started giving away food probably Oh, I, I think it's been at least 15 years ago. And we weren't giving away Hostess donuts and Twinkies. <laughs> we wouldn't even allow those donations to come to our pantry. What we found is people will eat healthier if they know how it affects their body and they have access to it. And it makes a difference. And as research progresses, we know that the gut contains bacteria that make a lot of the neurotransmitters and proteins that we need to go to sleep. So when we talk about diseases of chronic, uh, chronic diseases of aging, I no longer think it, of it that way. I consider those chronic diseases of diet and we need to move to a healthier diet. You don't eat the same thing you ate as an infant, right? Right. You came into this world drinking milk. So when people say, oh, I can't give up 
my steak, my french fries, my hamburger, my fried fish, my ice cream, and my pound cake. I love them too. But those are all things that we were trained to eat because yes. we didn't come here craving steak. So you don't have to run for me. I'm not going to judge you if I see your plate and it's a sea of brown. I'm not, and don't judge me because you might see my plate and it'll be a sea of brown. But in general, I try to feed my body what God made. Because if God came and took a trip through your body, would he see anything that he created? Do you got anything God made in your body? Or is it all man-made? Mm. We were not made to function off of man-made food. So Amen. come on out and hear Coach Aranda enlighten us. I can't wait to hear what you're going to share. I learn something new from my colleagues whenever I listen to them. And she's going to be with uh, Mrs. Ramos, whose family went plant-based milk because they, they couldn't digest cow's milk. And she's going to come and talk to us about plant-based milk. She has a restaurant, I'm sorry, a store in D.C. That's how I met her. We were there and I needed my green drinks. <laughs> and she makes them as well as her plant-based milk. When you are in a hurry and you need something to lift you up, instead of reaching for coffee, the caffeine is washing out your calcium. It's disturbing your circadian rhythms. I'm not saying it's not good for you, but it's timing is everything. And all this toxic stuff you're putting in there with those toxic coffee beans, because most of us are not eating organic. I want you to learn a few other things so you can switch it out to have something a little healthier, something that's not going to trigger your arthritis, make you stay up all night peeing. <laughs> so uh, yes, I hope that you'll come all of next week, but if you can't, if you signed up, we're going to be sending out the links. And if you didn't register, I put the link in here so you can, so you can get the link because I know we all have things to do. If you can't make it, come on uh, and look at the replay. I also want to let you know that um, Pastor Scott has donated some items from us for us related to Martin Luther King. And we're going to be giving those away as prizes. Not all of them because they're going to our church, but he's allowed us to give a few away. So if you want one of these things, I wish I had one in my hand. Wait a minute, I do have one. I think you can see this. This is a book about Martin Luther King, very timely about um, his work. And then we also have a t-shirt in a size medium. Now, if you don't wear a medium, I'm, I'm not trying to shame anybody, but if you need a little motivation, it's a nice t-shirt. So <laughs> if you win it, maybe you'll be motivated to see if you can't get that t-shirt on you. Not next week. Some of us need a little bit of time, but sometime during 2024. So I have enjoyed today. It's been a blessing. I want to thank all of our speakers. I want to thank each of you for coming out. Share the news, share with someone else that they come next week. Next week, we're going to help get focused. We're going to use the information we got today. Go ahead and keep working on your list. When we come back on Monday, we're going to use those goals that you're generating over the weekend to build our vision board. You can use a, a paper vision board or a cardboard one but I want us to try to learn a digital one so we can carry it on our cell phones because you need to keep it someplace where you see it frequently. And we want to get focused, have some God-directed goals, not just look at somebody else and say, gee, it's the middle of January. I haven't come up with a New Year's resolution and then start trying to think of something. We're going to pray about it. And when we do that, God is going to move us into our area where we have talent. If your talent is in a certain area, I believe that God wouldn't send you there, wouldn't give you that talent, and wouldn't give you the resources. It'll be much easier for you to reach your goals. And as Dr. Mike said, my life had more meaning 
when I understood the assignment. And that's what we're going to try to get straight on on Monday. And if you need extra help, we put in a workshop on Saturday and uh, it goes for three days. So check it out. The link is there. Share. And I've been blessed. I hope you all have been blessed. And let's go out and be a blessing to someone else. Uh, if you want to make some comments to Reverend Stubb, please unmute your mic now and um, and share. Well, I, I, I just want to say um, this has been enlightening for me, although I started last night, of course, and just looking forward to uh, next week. Um, particularly, I just heard Coach uh, Rwanda said something about detoxing. So when I go to the store now, I have to be very careful in terms of what I pick up. So I'm trying to detox this body. We want to make sure I can get to 100 and we'll do the best we can to, to, to we have a goal. So we're going to do the best we can to kind of detox. Very interesting and very enlightening in terms of what we can do for our body spiritually and, and, and physically. So I'm looking Absolutely. forward to the, the, the sessions. And um, as I said, enjoy this two days, two days, but uh, very enlightening. And I, and, and Dr. Stubbs and Dr. Tim, you know that uh, Paula, uh, I, I, I get involved. Do the best I can, and it's been enlightening. I'm looking, look, really looking forward to to the rest of the summit. So again, uh, thank you for the invite, and thank you for the presentation. Thank you for what you do, and continue to do that because God has you here for a reason. And so we 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 are honored to be a part of that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Deaconess Washington. We appreciate your encouragement and your 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 being here. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it too. And afterwards, I want to talk with you to see if there's a way we could help some of those seniors in your senior group at Bethel Baptist in Gloucester be able to hear some of the things that are going to be shared next week. Thank you. Looking forward to that. Thank you so much. And Dr. Pamela, I want to say this to you. Uh, thank you for your patience because I think we have exchanged more words in the last few weeks than we have in years. So therefore it's 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 a blessing. So I really appreciate your time and your effort and what you're trying to do and will do for the Bethel Baptist Church family in particular. So again, thank you. You're welcome. And um, the invitation would be extended to others. If you know people who wanna join us by audio, we are putting things in place so we don't wanna leave people who may not have access to internet the, the rural divide is real and I have experienced it. And then we have some people who have been blessed with many years and they don't have the skills to get on uh, Zoom or use some of the technology. So we're trying to help them. We've been able to help a few people thanks to my husband, uh, Reverend Dr. Stubbs. And anyone else wanna make a comment or anything before we go? Yes, Pastor, Pastor Scott. Did not our hearts burn within us as a man of God spoke to us by the way? Tremendous, excellent, fantastic, uh, wonderful. Um, just keep up the great work that you're doing, uh, both of you. Um, let me put my mask on here so I can talk a little better here. <laughs> right. I keep up the great work that you've been doing, uh, and uh, we've been enjoying uh, the entire program. Now, for it's a 501c3 that we have that's donated uh, everything. But you know what? I will make sure my wife is sending you something right now, Dr. Uh, Pamela Hamilton Stubbs, right? And I have something for you also, Rep. Stubbs. I'm supposed to get together. I got to put some in it first. But I'll make sure that, uh, I, and my wife's thing she's sending to have everyone get the keychain, the Dr. King keychain, okay, for everyone who's on right now. All right. And I don't know, did you get the B loved ones? There's so many different things. Did you get the B loved ones? They send you those? No, but they sent the, okay. So we're going to make sure. Huh? Yes, sir. Some of the, yes, we do have some of those too. The magnets. Okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna make sure the B love ones. These B these are lapel pens. Everyone oh, with see. us right now will receive that also. Okay. So that that's for everybody. All right. So keep up the great work. We're trying to what we're doing is we're spreading the message of nonviolence. Uh I'd like to see uh millions of dollars go to the Reverend Dr. Bernice King's program. She has a program called 365, nonviolence, 365 a year, you know, we need to do things to change our society and make things better and better. So keep up the great work that you're doing. We're behind you hundred percent. 
God bless you. Great message. Uh, and we love you all. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Scott. Well, we love you more. And we, we thank you for, yes, we do. And we, we thank you for, for being here with us. You're always in our corner. You, were, you did a brilliant job last night. And I love you, brother and, and sister, for over the years. You all have been there. So thank you so much. Thank you. We love both of you. And I just admire both of you. And I admire my sister, First Lady Don Scott, for the work she does to make sure that mm -hmm. people who need a warm hat, some gloves, socks, that they get them. She actually knitted her and some friends, knitted hats. I want to say almost a hundred of them. Oh, wow. Wow. And um, if you want to help her in her efforts next year, in the post summit resource guide, you'll be able to reach out to Pastor Scott and Sister Don Scott because they'll be in there. And let's encourage each other in the work that God is leading us to do to make other people have an abundant life. That's what he promised us. Dr. Stubbs, to God be the glory. I am so thankful that you invited me to this summit. It has been amazing. Oh gosh, Dr. Jubilee, I am so excited. Pastor Scott, Pastor Stubbs, it is just amazing to meet such beautiful people. I am the state president for Virginia. I live in Danville and my husband and I, we have a small church, but we give we give, we get blessed, and we get blessed. We have our state convention coming up in April the 26th and the 27th in uh, Lynchburg, Virginia. And Dr. Scott, I would love to know where I could get some of those keychains for our gifts for my women. If you could pass that information along to Dr. Stubbs, it would be something different. I'm just so excited. I guess you all can see I get excited over small things. But Pastor Stubbs, God has been good to me because I went through a battle with cancer in 2006 and 2007. They told me I had four years. And today is 2024. Oh, that was. So four years, God is amazing. I had a wonderful husband that stood by me. And uh, Dr. Stubbs has just been a jewel to me. She's a sweetheart. Dr. Stubbs, uh, you treat her with kindness because she's a jewel to me. She offers me tips on this, tips on that. And you all see when I get excited, I can't talk, but I love you all. And I have enjoyed this summit and hopefully we'll see you the next couple of days. Again, I'm excited and I praise God. I know I will have to leave shortly because I have to do a welcome for Seattle. But I just want you all to know I enjoyed this. And Pastor mm -hmm. Scott, if you could get that information to Dr. Pam, I would really appreciate it. Love yes, you all bunches. Yes, ma'am. How many do you need? How many do you need? Probably about uh, 75 to 100. Mm -hmm. Listen, now I got to say this. Are they real expensive? Let I just right. like to be straight up front. Are they really well, we're running scary? out of some, but I can definitely, you know, get you get you as many as I can give out there. But we also have uh, we have Dr. King um, postcards. And I think uh, all three of us, the three churches uh, mm -hmm. have some there. I'll try to give you as much as I can, you know, and everything like that. So and some shirts, too, whatever we have left, you know, so we try to do the best we can. We got some medium and extra large things too. They mixed everything up, so I don't know who has what, but it's all good. Okay, all right. And what well, state convention is that? What state convention? Virginia. 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 Ministers' yeah, wives and Virginia. ministers' widows. 
Okay, my family's from from uh, Petersburg originally. I'm, oh I'm gosh, yes, so uh, Scott. Uh, yes, I'm a, so I'm a, Johnson. You know, so it's not not the Scott part, but my mom's side of family. But uh, that's a uh, that Virginia Union. A lot of them get okay. my. All yeah. right, I know exactly. Bless you. Bless you. So I'll help you. Whatever you need, we'll help you. Are you with God's you? There was when I was working with them. It was one race, one church, human race. All I'm just a nobody. I, I'm just a country preacher from <laughs> from Long Island. You know, daddy from New Orleans, mom from you know uh, uh, Virginia, West Virginia, and Virginia, and I'm nobody. But uh, we we started a ministry called Jesus Stands for Love and Justice Ministries Incorporated. Something's been on my heart since I was in my 20s. I finally got oh, a chance right. to start. So as a CEO, as a as the executive, well, what am I, president, CEO, whatever, the head of the board, I'm able to make, say, yeah, I'm going to give $1,000 here to, to Sister uh, Jubilee for her program, help you out. We're doing things that we can do without having to go through a whole lot of, you know how it is. Y'all know. All right, right. Y'all know. Bless I'm you. sorry, Dr. Stoves. I didn't mean to take up all this time, but I am just so impressed with this great school of people here. I live to learn, like I told the ladies at a program the other week, in all of my 72 years, well, I just turned 73, the fifth, I said, I still learn it. And I appreciate you all so much and just look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I wanted to introduce you and let people know that you are the state president. I'm a member of the Virginia Association yes. of Ministers, Wives, and Ministers, Widows. And um, I am just thankful that you would take time because I know you have a lot of demands and a lot of people want you. So I'm thankful that you came and that you were able to join us today. Thank you. Okay. Well, if there's no other comments, I'm going to ask my husband. Oh, hi, Miss Essence. Hi. I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I did miss a bit of the first part, but it has been wonderful, and I am been. I am just so. I'm almost, and this is unusual for me. I'm almost without words to tell you how nice this really is. And, and I thank Dr. Stubbs for waking me up. <laughs> I I got no sleep. I'm this is my problem. You're happy with that and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna conquer this situation. I will definitely do that. But I thank you so much. Um everyone has contributed who are contributing has done an excellent job and it's encouraging. It's encouraging me completely. And I really and truly believe that things are gonna change for me in a more positive way because I'm committed myself to listen, learn, and be as obedient as I can with what I'm being fed here. It is wonderful. And I am in I am determined this continues to make me feel like I need to continue and I will. And I just thank all of you so much. And Reverend Scott is my pastor and, and Dawn is Mrs. Dawn Scott uplifts us all and is so interesting and so good that this continues throughout our country. Uh, everyone is from everywhere. And uh, Dr. St uh, Stubbs, you are wonderful. You are a wonderful lady. You have done, brought this to us, and I am grateful to you so much. And I thank all of you for helping us. And this is how it's going to, it's beginning this way, and I know it's going to end this way, that we're all going to, you know, relive our lives in a way and improve them so much. And as Reverend Scott said, leave the, leave last year leave the past and look forward to the future. And this is what we need to do. And I thank you so very much, all of you. 
But I want to say thank you so much, Ms. Zestes, for being here with us. She's a fine member of our church, a very hard worker. We appreciate her so much. And thank you, Reverend Stubbs, for helping her get the, uh, the so she can see it. It's the first time you never see her. You know, she's usually on the telephone <laughs> like that. So great job, what you all, you all did together there. And uh, I want to thank my my wife also for uh, introducing me uh, last last night and everything like that. I appreciate that and the prayer that you you gave and and and, sh and she's gonna have a word, uh, Reverend Stuff. You know how she's shy, but but here she here here here's what she did. She put she crocheted she crocheted eighty eighty <laughs> uh, hats for the homeless uh, that we have over there at uh, uh, the Columbus House. She did her on her own oh, yeah. start in October and then finished by November. And then uh, she got that little red hat. How you you all wear those red hats now, you ladies? Right, right. Anyway, but uh, but but uh, uh, and and then we bought some gloves, you know. And what else did we buy, honey? What else did we buy? Gloves? What else did we buy? Socks. We socks. Thank you. Oh, socks. That's right. And we had some donation socks also. But let me give it to Mrs. Scott. To go ahead and say what she's going to say. Go ahead. Um, the the message today from Reverend Stubbs was so powerful. Um, he spoke at our church uh, one time, and it was the first time I heard the full testimony. And I heard it today and got more, and I have more notes. <laughs> um, it's it's a, such a powerful testimony and encouraging. Um, because so many times you, you're given gloom and doom and you just, you're told something by the doctor and you're like, okay, but you have to go to Dr. Jesus. Yes. Yes. And that, make, that makes all the difference. Uh, and this is just, it's an amazing summit, I have to say. And to hear um, the different people that we will hear from and the people that we have heard from, it's a wealth of information. So I'm like Mrs. Estes here. I'm listening and learning and um, so that I can make changes. So again, thank you for this summit. Amen. And and, Amen. and our subs has preached at our church many times. We'll be preaching again too. Uh, <laughs> and we enjoy enjoy hearing from him so much. You know, bless you. Thank you so much, oh. Pastor Scott and and Sister Scott and uh, Ms. Estes, and just thank you all for for being here. It it means a lot. Thank you. And I and I also want to echo what's been said about my dear wife. She has poured out her heart into creating this summit. And you can see the fruits of what the Lord can do with a disciple who is willing to serve and others who are willing to come alongside and help. And so I, I want to acknowledge and to thank her, thank her for the gracious introduction that she gave, but, and most of all, just for being who she is. You know, God has blessed me with an amazing life's partner and I am grateful. Thank you. Oh, and, and just one last thing. In my house, I always have the last two words. Yes, dear. <laughs> Amen. I love it. I <laughs> wish my husband was listening. <laughs> I'm going to give you an opportunity to have the last word. <laughs> I'm going to try to let it be the last word <laughs> because I want you to close us out in prayer. If it's okay at this time now, if we finished our exchange and fellowship, uh, Reverend Stubbs, Reverend Dr. Stubbs, would you please close us out in prayer? Yes, dear. Dear God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. We thank you for your presence. We're not in each other's presence physically, but spiritually you connect us where, wherever we are because you have the whole world and the whole universe in your hands. And we are grateful. Regardless of what comes or goes, we know that you've got us. You've mm -hmm. got the situation. We know that we can remember and hold on to the words of Jesus. Don't be afraid, take courage, you are with us. And as we move forward with this summit and with this year, we move forward in faith, the faith to know that if it's only a mustard seed, 
that's all it takes for you to work wonderful miracles in our lives because you can take a little, a mustard seed, five loaves and two fishes, a little, each of us, and you can multiply that which needs to be done, the good in this world, the love in this world. Oh God, we pray that peace will come to this earth and that it will begin with each of us and that we will be part of a worldwide moral revival in which people will say, I'm willing to love my neighbor as myself. And that's the real meaning of coming to Jesus, not just with words, but with the way we live our lives. Help us to do better. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you you're not through with us yet. We go forward now in faith, knowing that you're with us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Have a blessed weekend. Thank you. You too. Be blessed, everyone. God bless. Have a great weekend. Bye -bye. Love you all. Blessings, everyone. Yes. God bless. Bye. Love to everyone. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Be more. See you next week. Amen. All right. Bye -bye. All, right. All right. The um, uh, recording will come out if you missed part of today. Recording will come out. Just check your email and you'll get the link. Sorry, honey, you didn't get the last word. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem, my dear. <laughs> I know. <laughs>